tears. All right, so my first book for uh, review from Analog Sci-Fi Book Reviews uh, comes from my favorite author, um, Robert Heinlein, or at least one of them. And it is the number nine in his juvenile series, Tunnel in the Sky. It was published in uh, 1955, and it's four books away from Starship Troopers, which um, apparently shifted his uh his writing style from writing books like these which were geared towards uh guys in uh in high school or um you know in college 16 to 24 um following young guys in his typical mantra of the competent man and uh we follow a competent man here uh rod walker to heinlein-esque um motifs or plot devices that are in this story are one the stargates um so these are uh portals that uh, allow people to step through them and um quickly close the distance between earth and some of the frontier planets um the one caveat of that is that they i guess apparently cost a lot to maintain so they're not necessarily something that stays open for a long time and the second thing that's also very Heinlein-esque is uh, Rod Walker uh, is a high schooler, and one of the classes that he can take is Advanced Survival. And Advanced Survival is a an elective, so it's not necessarily uh, required to graduate, but I think it, per, it for the society that's being uh, communicated in the book, it's something that probably holds a lot of esteem. So, you know, even though maybe you got straight A's, but that you didn't decide to take advanced survival, you might not be a real man in Heinlein's world. So in those, those two, those two things that, uh, allow the, the narrative and the story to move forward is, uh, we follow Rod Walker, a young man who, uh, is deciding to go through, uh, advanced survival uh, his father didn't do it. Um, his father and his family don't encourage it. And, you know, for the first, you know, a few dozen pages, people are telling him not to do it. And then he decides to go through with it. And um, he steps up to the portal and uh, there's a whole bunch of other people. Um, in speaking to a few, he's uh, decided to carry lightly. So he only has a knife on him while other people might have an attack dog or a machine gun or armor, he decides to take a little bit more of a lighter route, um, which ends up uh, benefiting him. But this uh, troop is supposed to only last about 10 days. They're supposed to go through the portal, survive, live up in a tree, and uh, make it. And then uh, after 10 days, they're supposed to come back. But that doesn't necessarily happen. And they're stuck in there. And they're meant there to survive. And that's the part of the book that I was really excited about. And, you know, this almost um, battle royale, this Hunger Games type of story that was written, you know, more than 50, you know, I guess 70 years ago now. Um, and, and in the kind of the way that Lord of the Flies is. So, like, you know, you take these kids and you drop them in a, you know, um, unhospitable place and they're forced to survive so but these are guys these these characters are a lot older they're more towards you know beginning college so you know i expected you know <laughs> not necessarily bloodshed but i expected you know, that they would start off with 20 people and then had whittle it down to three that's not necessarily what happens in the book and that's what's uh disappointing about it in the end is that you, you read the back of the book and you think, oh, it's uh, it's going to be this big um, battle and people are going to fight to the death. And that happens for me at maybe 30 pages. And then most of the other half of the book and the center part of the book is them forming a government, <laughs> which is not, which is as exciting as it sounds. Um, and ultimately the, the, 
the prism of Heinlein is is pushing all of this uh, to the center, where ultimately Rod um, is abandoned by all of the people that uh, that he went through the portal with, um, and he is a nation of one man. And you can definitely see the libertarian kind of point of view that Heinlein's kind of putting forward, where. Um, all, it feels as if the entire story is designed just to get to that point, but he 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 fibs you into thinking that it's going to be this Hunger Games, this battle royale, but it ultimately becomes this uh, exploration dialogue because um, ultimately Rod is uh, negotiating with um, with the uh, the people that plan to um, populate the planet that he's on. And, um, he's, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a nation of one and he's not able, he's, you know, he, he hands it, he hands it over, but, but it's done in this way where it's, you know, 20 pages of, of discussing, uh, the merits of these ideas and, uh, you know, it's kind of foolish, but it's also kind of interesting. Um, I think because he wrote this probably in a year, um, because he wrote, uh, what was it? 12 of these, uh, four, four young adults, one every year for, for like 12 years. And, um, you know, I, I, I think the idea is awesome. I like the idea of the Stargate. I like the idea of the advanced survival. It, these are cool ideas. These are done really, they, they, they lure you in, but I didn't expect the idea that it was about young people, uh, talking about the merits of leadership and how how they would decide within a small group of them who was going to be the big man. And uh, Rod, even though he's competent, he's kind of he's written to be kind of an asshole. He's kind of written to be this. Uh, well, if you don't do it this way, this will happen. And then the next chapter, the thing happens, and then he's the leader. And even though he's he's maybe written to be kind of like, oh, I'm reluctant to to take it upon, you know, who else besides the point of view character is really gonna you know move it forward? Um, and and there's a there's a a bit of a subversion where a character that he thinks is a a, a, a man is actually a woman, and you know she maybe it's a bit of a survival technique and such, or that she's. Um, doesn't want to stand out um, and be too feminine and maybe be a target, um, but somehow that's uh, somehow that's something that uh, shocks um, Rod. But the other the other aspect, and it's a white man on the cover, and in doing a little bit of a deeper dive and trying to get a better understanding of the narrative and maybe see if anything that I didn't if see if anything I missed. Uh, apparently, Rod is black. <laughs> Um, Rod is written to be black, but there's no description of him being black. There's no, uh, if it is, it's, it's complete, it, it's, it's so subtle. It doesn't matter or, or it's not even, you know, brought up or brought up so, so minusculely you don't even see it. Um, so if I do read it again and I don't think I will just because I, I, I will probably <laughs> stop reading when, once they start forming the government. But, uh, you know, get a sense of the if Rod's black, maybe these uh, racial politics are a little bit more interesting because, um, you know, this was written in 1955. And uh, unless it had to do with libertarianism, libertarianism uh, Heinlein wasn't that woke. So, um, yeah. If I had to give this, I, I don't want to give things a, a numeric review, but I, if I had to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, I'd have to give it a thumbs down because you don't necessarily get what you paid for. Uh, it's a quick read. It has some interesting parts. It's, um, I guess, maybe, what, uh, four good chapters, and you know the rest of it just kind of feels very... Uh, long and dry and talky. Uh, I do one of the aspects I love of Highland is that he's very dialogue heavy. Um, he's not a big description guy um, because all of the ideas come from the characters' mouths, um, and they're not necessarily like 
archetypes. They do feel like real people and they do have their own voice. You know, the voice in this one isn't the voice of Manny in um, Moon is a Harsh Mistress or the voice of um, Michael in um, Strange in a Strange Land. Um, this is a very uh, action hero uh, point of view. And I think it hurts the story. And I think the government uh, angle and pivot, which probably, in my guess, is wasn't the original intention of the book. Um, and I think if it went in the direction of a traditional um, uh, sp- spaghetti western, uh, you know, whittle down to three, um, it, it, it would feel more exciting, but it also would feel like that that's the book it was supposed to be. Um I think the um, use of the Stargates and the advanced survival is interesting enough and kicks the story off in a way that um, makes you want to know what happened. Because if the end result is he's talking to uh, like a government um, uh, bureaucracy that wants to, you know, population bomb the planet that he's on... uh, I feel like then he should have just made that a short story of the end part because the uh, the rest of the story suffers if that's the if that's the conclusion. And that's Tunnel in the Sky. <laughs> uh, not a big fan of it. Uh, if I was, I don't think I'd even lend it to anybody. I think I I would just put it on a stack of books that I would put in. A freebie or uh, in in uh, you know for an exchange. Uh, it's not something that I feel like I would have really proud on my shelf. Uh, but I do love Heinlein, and I will plan to read the rest of his uh, juvenile series uh, periodically and bring it up here uh, and tell you what you tell you what I think. Uh, so that was Tunnel in the Sky.